I think that most guys I know, most guys I've ever met in my life would never want to date me. I know that they feel this way. I can just sense it. I think that most guys I know are like, Fiona's cool, would never want to date her. I'm pretty hungover, but I'm going to explain with my one brain cell. Men often have opinions or say things that really don't make a lot of sense about politics, psychology, social culture, feminism. I often find myself disagreeing with men and I simply cannot let them think that they're right. So I want to debate. I want to argue. I want to prove you wrong. And I bring sometimes an aggressiveness to my debate style. No, you know what it is? It's a confidence to my debate style. I know two guys who I've debated with who have beat me. And I've said, you know what? You're right. In my life. And my dad's a lawyer and I beat him every damn time. He calls me up. I'm sorry, you're right, I'm wrong. I don't think a lot of men love this. So I turn off the majority of men with this uh, little spice, but I think I will attract the best 1%. It just hasn't happened yet, but just wait on it. Women perceive themselves as exceptionally smart, intelligent, and attractive, capable of discussing every facet of life. Women, emboldened by feminist ideals, live in a sort of fantasy, believing themselves to be modern and progressive. Such attitudes are often portrayed as causing frustration among men who feel alienated by what they perceive as women's self-centered nature. As a result, some reportedly seek ways to distance themselves from modern women. So she's not younger than me, she's not skinnier than me, and she's not prettier than me. Then why couldn't it just be me? Because she's softer than you. She's quieter. She doesn't yell at me. She doesn't call me an idiot, tell me to shut up all the time. She listens to me. She's nice to me. She doesn't make me feel like the only thing stopping her from being happy is me. I have reached my breaking point of having to do this life thing alone. I just want to be held, nurtured, loved, cared for, physically, emotionally, spiritually, mentally, in all aspects. I want my heart and soul to be seen and held. I just can't do it alone anymore and I'm at my breaking point. I can do it physically alone. I've been doing it, but I don't want to. I don't deserve to because I am worthy of companionship. I deserve, I deserve. I'm a man and I deserve $20 billion. I'm still waiting on it. We don't deserve anything. I've been doing it, but I don't want to. I don't deserve to because I am worthy of companionship, of community, of love, of affection, of support, of someone lifting me up, motivating me, encouraging me. I am worthy of that. So I deserve to receive that. I don't want to do it alone anymore, and I've been crying all day because of it. She's it's common to hear the refrain, I deserve, from modern women, who often seek the best in life. Yet this pursuit sometimes overshadows the efforts required for a balanced life. Modern women prioritize their careers and financial independence, neglecting investment in their homes and families. Consequently, some may find themselves lacking in companionship. While it's natural to desire fulfillment, it's crucial to recognize the importance of nurturing all aspects of life. True happiness often stems from a harmonious blend of personal and professional endeavors, along with meaningful relationships. Rather than solely focusing on what one deserves, finding contentment involves acknowledging the effort required in all facets of life, but this is not a modern women's cup of tea. They do not know the importance of all this. The heightening of your sensual and sexual energy, the more that you heal, the more that you love yourself, the more that you become connected with yourself, the more that you embody your self-worth, your self-love, your confidence, the more that you become passionate about your goals, aspirations, and fulfillment, and soul fulfillment. Like, ain't nobody talk about that part. Because it's hard. It ain't easy, okay? It ain't easy. Especially if you're celibate. And I've been celibate for two years. Celibate, I've been celibate for two years. What? 
I've been celibate for two years. And I've been celibate for two years. And the more that I love myself and get connected with myself and get connected with my soul and, and all that fulfillment, the tinglier I get. The more sensitive I get. <laughs> Jesus. The more sexual energy I have. Like The woman who once proclaimed, I deserve the best companionship, now mocks the significance of intimacy in a video, revealing her facade. Disguising her true desires, she ridicules the notion of sex, betraying her earlier assertions. This contradiction highlights the disconnection between her proclaimed ideals and her actual beliefs. It's a poignant reminder of the complexities within individuals, where outward declarations may not always align with inner truths. To cut things off my intuition is telling me no it's a no i pray about anything and everybody that comes my way i like to mind my business i like to stay in my own lane that's why i'm single i'm born with a capital b the modern woman's duplicity is evident in a recent video where she initially extols her appealing traits hinting at a desire for companionship yet in a subsequent segment she candidly reveals aspects of her personality that repel potential partners offering a stark portrayal of her singlehood. This stark contrast underscores the complexity and contradictions within individuals' self-perceptions. While one side seeks connection and validation, the other inadvertently sabotages such prospects. I turned 25 this week, and if I'm honest, I'm terrified. I'm terrified because I feel like a failure and I don't know if anyone else watching this understands that feeling, but my life looks nothing like I thought it would at this age. When I was a kid, I always said, by 25, I'll be married or I'll have a kid. I'll have this amazing career. And I've done a lot of cool things, don't get me wrong, but I'm about to be 25. And most nights I go to bed feeling so lonely. And then most days I wake up feeling lost, like I don't know what I'm doing with my life. I have this overwhelming thought of, is this it? Is this all there is? For the man that just stopped me in the rain saying, excuse me, it's raining, I'm on my own, I'm in Hammersmith. I got robbed last week, he said, excuse me. And I went, no, because I'm worried that someone's gonna distract me and someone's gonna steal my phone again. I then get onto the platform and he comes up to me and he goes, I could have just said, I'm not interested. I've been in a relationship for eight years. I do not know any woman who would feel comfortable in that situation as they're on their own, it's raining, and they're about to enter a tube station. He made me feel like I was an asshole for, like, putting my boundaries up. The fact that he then came up to me again to, like, tell me off for breaking his ego makes me more angry. I'm just so fed up of men like that. Modern women, immersed in the currents of feminism, sometimes overlook the intrinsic value of family life. Their focus on independence and career often overshadows the nurturing of familial bonds. It's a realization that often dawns after the age of 30 when the echoes of loneliness reverberate louder and the specter of aging casts its shadow. The harsh reality hits them. There's no one around to care for them as they grow older. These revelations send shivers down their spines, prompting introspection and acknowledgement of their past oversights. Smart, sexy, confident girl. I just can't deal anymore because the conversations with these men is literally so mundane that it hurts my head. It gives me a migraine. Either they're talking about their feelings from something that happened 15 years ago and you're like, you need to go to therapy for this because there's no reason it should still be bothering you from 15 years ago. Or they're talking about their accomplishments or achievements at work or they're just repeating stories that they've already told you and trying to make you laugh at them again, but it's like, you already told me the story and I already laughed at it. So I'm not gonna laugh again because I don't like hearing repeat stories. <laughs> because at that point, I'm just stroking your ego and then I'm energizing you as a spiritual being and you're draining me as a spiritual being. And I don't think that's fair. In the quiet moments of solitude, they confront their vulnerability and confess the errors of their ways. The pursuit of individual success, while commendable, sometimes comes at the cost of neglecting the nurturing of relationships. They realize that true fulfillment doesn't solely reside in career achievements, but also the warmth of familial love and companionship. 
This awakening prompts a recalibration of priorities. They recognize the need to invest not only in their professional endeavors, but also in fostering meaningful connections with loved ones. It's a journey of self-discovery and growth, where they strive to strike a balance between independence and interdependence, between personal aspirations and the bonds of family. As they navigate this path, they learn to cherish the moments spent with loved ones, understanding that these connections provide solace and support in times of need. They embrace the essence of family, not as a hindrance to their feminist ideals, but as a source of strength and fulfillment in their journey toward self-actualization. That's all for today on Alpha Male. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like and subscribe button. Don't forget to turn on notifications. You can support the channel by becoming a member or sending a super chat. Share your thoughts in the comments. See you tomorrow.